here, you can start. All right. So I'll start by showing my my awesome Hello World app in Rack. Uh, Why no colors? <laughs> because I normally <laughs> don't use pink. Okay. Okay. So it it actually uses a uh, middleware called Belt, and the app itself is just a uh, uh, a prop. And I think one thing that really hurts me is I wanted to do to do an app that was just a uh, a bunch of props. Mm -hmm. But the really annoying thing was that the API for the middleware and for the actual app is slightly different. So you can't actually do that. Yes. Because the middleware is, it's is automatically instantiated by, by the builder. You can extend the proc class to get initialized. That would be uh, uh, one solution. Yes. That is. Uh, okay. And because it's it's all Ruby code, right? Where am I? Um, it doesn't actually check that you're passing the end thing. Uh, so one thing you can do is you can just pass whatever you want here. really super simple and it was probably even simpler than I thought it was before I started reading the code. But I guess the, one of the biggest gotchas is that the middleware can be order dependent. So if you have something like Warden, it will be depending on you having some session middleware before it in like the middleware chain. Yeah, as I already said, the slightly different APIs for apps and, and middleware seem a bit uh, unwarranted to me. Mm -hmm. If we're going to go with a super simple API anyway, then uh, I felt like we should have kept the same API uh, It was slightly obscure to me at first as well that if you use a, a config.ru file, the contents of that file is actually wrapped in a wrapped builder when the code is executed. And that is everything I have time to prepare. Cool. I can show you this more. Alright. Anyone else wants to present something before I get to some more advanced stuff? No? See you next time. Thursday, uh, mm -hmm. so Rack is something uh, that we use, but I, I didn't know anything about it. So I uh, pulled up some recent tutorials, read some articles, and uh, uh, this was basically following a tutorial by uh, Ryan Bates, which is quite a long time ago. Um, so what I basically done is, uh, you know, 
know, I put most of my logic in a, in a Maya, not Ruby. Mm -hmm. uh, what puzzles me is uh, certain things over here, uh, sort of just like, uh, I read a documentation that you always need to finish your response, and this was what Brian Bates did as well, but this is slightly puzzling to me over here because, uh, um, well, because there's this, I'm not sure how, how this is different from this, I guess. But otherwise, I pretty much followed the tutorial and played around with it. Uh, tried to do some bug to find out what the environment was, and I learned mm -hmm. a little bit about that. And one thing that I tried on this rack app was uh, by using uh, the re uh, this middleware, I guess, called Reloader. So it allows me to uh, make the changes to the app without me having to restart the server. So this was something that when I use Sinatra or Rails, it does for me, and I don't know what what is actually going on behind. So I learned something new, uh, and then I, well, there was this uh, auth basic, which allows me to just do some very simple auth authentication without using uh, without having to create a user model or anything like that. So uh, Wait, could you increase the font size? Oh, sorry, yeah. So, uh, I guess how the authentication works is you just go to first element is a status, the second one is the header, and the third one will be the body. And if you just return the response, you are not returning an array, you are returning the object of response class. Okay. And when you do response finish, what it does, it just it executes some block, uh, it deletes some stuff, and then it returns this, uh, these three elements, the array that you need. So that's why you need to, that's why you need to call finish. Or you don't need to always create the response object, you can just return a array of any three elements. Okay, uh, so I've got the 
simple app. Let me check if I downloaded it. Give me a second, let me download this app. So I've got application to show you that basically Rack apps are uh, nested applications. So we, uh, what middleware does, and actually middleware is like behaves just like an app. So you nest an app in an app in an app, uh, and then you can do each middleware can do something before calling the next the next level or after that. Uh, so I do here uh, two things. I use two middlewares. First middleware is a random sleeper and it will wait a random amount of time between zero and one second uh, and then it will call the, uh, the, the application. So first it will sleep and then it will do, uh, it will call the next app. And the second one is time measure. Time measure first uh, checks what is the current time, then it calls the next application and then it adds the text as you see, it adds two empty lines, and then it, uh, then some text that shows how uh, how much time it took to run this application. So this code is quite lame. Basically, time now minus time now it will return in seconds. So because this uh, this will sleep uh, less than one second, uh, it will be always zero point zero something. So I just do uh, I multiply by thousand to show this time in milliseconds. And now my app, so the hello, uh, so the hello app, the main application does nothing, it just returns the text hello. I haven't managed to see why I need to return array here. I don't know. It just tries to, Rack tries to run the each method on this, on the, on the third value. So it needs to be an array apparently or a hash. I, I, haven't, I haven't checked it. So it will return a status 200, it will return no headers, it will just return this body. And now I build my application using the Rack Builder. So first I use time measure, and I need to use time measure first uh, before uh, to start measuring time. Because if I do it this way, then first I will sleep and later I will start measuring time. So it doesn't make much sense. Uh, and then I run my then I run my uh, hello app. So actually I build an app that consists of three different applications, and then then I run it. Uh, so let me. Work. Okay. Uh, on my private computer, it runs Puma by default because I've got Puma installed. Here I don't have Puma. The next server is Finn, and the next one in order is Webroot. So there is a hardcoded order in order in the rack that it will always take Puma whenever whenever it's possible. Okay. Uh, Okay, so it shows I responded in 400 something milliseconds, and now I refresh it and 450 here. Yeah, so it will always sleep between zero and one second, a random number, and then it will then it will respond. Uh, okay, so let me. Yeah, so this this app is is basically uh, very very simple. I want to show you now. Uh, the server and the handler, what it does. Okay, I've got too many views <coughs> open here. So let's start with the server, the first file uh, that we're supposed to read. So this one, uh, basically what it does is that it parses all the options that you pass to the, uh, when you start your application. It doesn't do much more. It basically takes all the options, it parses them, uh, adjusts them to, uh, to, this, uh, to the handlers format and uh, and runs the and runs the application. So the server basically as you see it has a bunch of these options. So you can do evil, you can do builder, warnings, you can include some path additionally, etc etc. So this is super boring code and it goes like this. Uh, 
and here this is the end of that option. No, it's not. Yes, or this is the end of parsing that uh, that option. So this method is like 100 lines of code just to parse, uh, just to parse different different options that you can pass. Uh, now, this one I haven't really checked, and then we've got the start method. And start method, we just call rack dot rack server dot start and create the new instance of the rack server, uh, and then it will. Then what it does? It uh, it adds certain uh, certain configuration, and this is super interesting thing. So you can call a, a global variable starting with a dash, but if you try to call the local variable starting with a dash, it will not work. So let's do it. No. It worked with... Huh. So it works only with one letter name. I didn't check that. Yep. Okay, I have no idea if it's some special attribute of Ruby or, or not. Now, if I do something like this, it says that this well, the global variable is not initialized. Now, if I do something like this, uh, yeah, it, it just doesn't work. And let's try one more thing. Yeah. This one doesn't doesn't work either. So the only case where you can start the name with a dash is the global variable, and it's only one letter. I guess it's some very very old legacy code. Uh, they have a lot of weird stuff with it, also with numbers as well. Yes. There, are, there are like some number global variables that stop at a random number. Okay. No idea. It's something that. I learn often when I read the code of some libraries that are, you know, quite quite old. The code is quite old. I guess that. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, the this first code thing is seven years old. <laughs> the first thing I reacted to was that everything was a bit messy, and I think they have been going with the approach of don't fix what's not broken sort of. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because this code. Like is the first commits are from two thousand and nine. Yeah. Because this code is, yeah, some of this could be refactored, could look way nicer, but it just not, uh, not changed. So anyway, you, you, you parse all these options here once again. So first, that method that I showed you before, it parses options and it generates a hash depending on what, what, what options you add in the command line. And then depending on these options later, you can uh, change, change some settings. Now, it checks the PID, uh, so it will, if, if this uh, app is already running, if you, if you provide the, the process ID and it's already running, it will, it will run you an, uh, an error. Then it, this is building application, so this is the, I think this is the builder class that we used in this example that will that will build the whole app and it will it will basically return the application that consists of all the apps uh, all the middlewares that you that you provide. Mm -hmm. So this is wrapped up. Uh, then it will demonize it if you provide it so that it will work as a demon in the background. You reserve the process ID and then in the end the last call that happens is the server run. So server Actually, here it's not the. Uh, this is not the instance of a server class. The server variable is the instance of handler class, which is to me it was very confusing because I am in a server class here, so I assume that server variable is an instance of the class where where I am. But no, it's a handler. So yeah. Uh, so now we get to the handler, and. Handler is a adapter between the application and the server. So as you know, in Ruby we use server applications to run our app. So we can run, the default one is WebRig, but we can run Unicorn, which I guess most popular, then Puma, which is the 
uh, one of few multi-threaded options, uh, etc. And each of the servers needs to have a specific handler that will adjust to the RAC's requirements. So we have on one hand, we have a framework like, like Rails or Sinatra that is on one hand of RAC, or on one side of RAC, and it needs to adjust to the RAC's, uh, to the RAC's syntax and, and the way it works. And then on the other hand, we've got the server. So basically this allows us, it's like kind of like a bridge pattern. It allows us to run any framework on any server. So Sinatra will, will run on Puma, Rails will run on Finn or Webrick, etc. Any framework that supports RAC will run on every ser any server that supports RAC. Okay, let's get to this handler code. So the handler class itself does almost not, just determines which server you are using, and that's it. It doesn't do it doesn't do much more, but it's a yeah. So it's it's quite a simple class. It basically, if you will provide the name of the server, it will try to guess what it is. So it will manipulate the string, it will uh, change all the letters to small, it will uh, basically if you provide some, if your name is not perfect, let's say it's in capitalized letter or you don't use the double columns etc, it, it will try to it will try to find what was the handler that you're trying to use. And this class, this module actually, it's not even a class, it's a module uh, based on that, it will try to fetch this server. Uh, it will try to initialize that that handler that you are looking for. So, uh, so here we've got default value. If it fails to understand what what you meant, or if you do not provide the server uh, which server you want to use, it will just try to guess based on the uh, based on the environment variables. So if you don't have any environment variables, and I didn't have any of this set, it just picks uh, the first available from the list of Puma, then Thin, then, uh, then Webrick. So in my case it was Thin. I, I don't know, I think it is installed with some, either with some framework or with Ruby uh, right now. That's why it picks it, because I've never used it actually, so I don't know why, why it's in my system. Anyway, so picking is that there is this function called try, try with require. So it tries to, uh, so it changes the name of, as I showed you, it will change the name and then it will require it. Mm -hmm. uh, but if it can't, then it will not raise an error, it will just go further. So that's why even though I don't have Puma, this try require uh, rescues the error. And it will only, if I, I think if I say, uh, if I add the warnings, it will say that it tried to load Puma, but it, that it fails, so then it picks the next one and the next one. And only if the last one fails, then, uh, then it will crash. And then with that function register, uh, so it registers all the basic, all the handlers that come with Rack itself. So these ones are like CGI, fast CGI, uh, these are all, this is all stuff. So basically Rack appeared, I think, in 2009 or 2008, something like that. Before that, there was no rack, so people were running uh, Rails and, and general Ruby scripts or CGI. Uh, then rack appeared as this module, uh, as this piece between the server and the and the application or framework. Uh, and I think the passenger server was the first one to support rack. So then everyone switched to this mod, mod passenger that was actually the mod for Apache, and then more servers. Uh, appears like unicorn and uh, standalone passenger, and I don't know, there are a few more like rainbows, for example. So anyway, this this module does that; it only picks the handler. And then, what's more interesting is that what this handler does. So each of these servers has a bit different syntax, a bit different options. Uh, a bit different way on, on starting the application, but basically the goal of the handler is to start the server with the application provided there. So Webrick is pretty simple here. So we've got just one method that is called run, and we determine the environment, a few options that we need. Uh, so for example, Webrick requires the port option. 
So we check if it exists, if it exists, and if not, for WebRig the def default power will be 8080. Then Rack has an option called Host, but WebRig the server doesn't recognize it. Uh, it uses bind address, so we need to change it. And basically, this is what we do in, in a handler. We transform the Rack syntax, the Rack options, uh, into the server, uh, into the syntax that server understands. And then what WebRig does is that it basically creates the new options with the server, it mounts the application under the uh, root path, and then it starts the server. So I will show you one more that is thin, because it's a bit different. So thin doesn't mount application. Application is one of the arguments that you start when you, when you create the server. So we put the host, port, uh, application, and then options. So it's a bit, a bit different syntax, but thin, as you see, it's like, what, 630? This is the whole class. There is nothing more. 36 lines of code. So this is, once again, very simple. Uh, and then the last one that I have is Puma. Make it a bit bigger. And Puma is a bit, uh, Puma is a bit longer. So Puma has this whole configuration object here. So we need to call, uh, we basically create a configuration object that will, uh, this is not a hash, it's, it's, it's a custom class. And then, uh, then this conf goes here. So this config contains everything. This config contains host and the application. You see it has custom methods. Uh, okay, it has custom methods like app, like port, etc. So yeah, okay, yeah. And then we create this launcher, uh, and then we have a bit different method, we call it launcher run. In other cases we have launcher.start. Any questions so far? No, so it actually runs okay. server first before it runs the handler part, or not the other way around? Because I was thinking like the handler picks the server and then it runs a, a server dot uh, rb. So it's the server dot rb that calls the handler. Yes. Yeah, yeah that's that's what it does. So the other way around. So server here uh, it chooses the handler. That's right. So server in the end server dot run calls handler no problem. Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's it regarding the handler then, I guess. I will show you a few more things. Uh, so here in this middleware you've got uh, it, there's no there's no middleware library here, so it's hard to determine what is really middleware in the um, in the rack in the rack. But what you can do is You can go to Rails, and then in the action pack, action pack consists, uh, among others, of action dispatch. And here you can see how different middlewares uh, work. Not all of them are rack middlewares, they are just from here. But for example, one of the bigger ones is cookies. So, so here you've got the method call, and uh, as you see, it returns in the end, it returns status, it returns header, it returns body. So what cookies middleware does in Rails, first it calls the application and then later, only later, it updates the, uh, it updates the HTTP header. And uh, this, if you see the line, it's num line number 570-something. So this is a huge application, like there's lots of documentation, but it's quite a big application here. There's lots of stuff that is happening. Uh, yeah, it has a bunch of custom modules and classes, etc. Uh, I think that this itself could be some separate library. I've seen libraries that are 50 lines of code, and this is 10 times bigger. Uh, so you can later check the other stuff. Uh, remote IP, for example, is. Ah, I didn't open remote IP. Yes. So remote IP is, is simpler. Uh, it basically provides you IP. <coughs> yes. So this is 
this is what it does in general. This is the core of it. So it adds the IP to the environment so that later you can call uh, request.remoteIP in your application. So the whole, all, all of this stuff, all 200 lines of code, uh, what it does, it, it calculates, it, it transforms the IP to the, uh, to the format that we, that we can understand. So Rails, I think right now, the, the default stack, if you do not remove any, any middlewares, it runs around 60 of them. So there are 60 levels of Rails application before it gets to your controller. So it will add this IP, it will, uh, it will go through SSL, for example. Uh, at some point, the middleware will not call your controller. It will just, uh, it will just return something up. So for example, you've got a middleware uh, you can have a middleware that will return something instead of going to the controller just because you want it to be super fast. So you can put this middleware somewhere between your two middlewares in the, in the Rails app. Uh, so you want the middlewares that you need to work and then the ones that are not needed, you can just skip. Your middleware will not call the app uh, app.call, it will just return everything up. I'm not sure if I know an example here, the static one. No, it does, it calls it. Um. Oh yeah, so for example, SSL. Uh, you require SSL, right? And if your request goes for SSL, then you will call this application. But if not, you will try to redirect. So, if a user makes request and they specify the HTTP protocol, it will not get to your controller because it will need to go through all the 60 or something layers. So what it will instead, it will go through like 10, year, 10 layers or so and this layer will stop it. And it will, it will, try, to, it will try to do something else, yes. Uh, so I use, for example, I think one case that I use Middleware is translations file. So we want to fetch the translations file, file that consists, con consists of all the keys and, uh, and phrases for a certain language, and we want it to be as fast as possible. So we just put it somewhere up in the, uh, in the list of middlewares. So that it doesn't need to go through SSL middleware, it doesn't need to go through a bunch of other stuff. Mm, but it but because of that, it returns in like 5-7 milliseconds instead of uh, standard 50, 50 or 100. Here I've got an example of the uh, middleware that does It's not really a middleware. Oh no, it does. It also does app.com. So it's flash. I think I've seen one that doesn't do, do it. Uh, so it seems that not all of these are really uh, behave like middlewares, but I might be wrong. I just thought that I've seen something that doesn't behave this way. Uh, okay, and I've got one more thing to show, which is the... I didn't mention it in the, uh, in the description of Meetup, but I checked it uh, later, and it appears to be interesting stuff. So Builder is a class that allows you to build the whole application that will consist of multiple apps and middlewares. Mm -hmm. so this is what I use uh, this I can close. So this is what I use in this example. It's basically it's it's a small DSL that uh, that composes the application. So as Ted mentioned it's order dependent. Uh, so it processes it line by line and then, then it runs the application in the end. So let's see how it works here. This is quite complicated and to be honest I do not understand everything here because uh, it's a DSL so it tries to recognize, it, it basically parses the code that you, that, you, uh, that you provide there and okay so first function is use and we've got this use instance variable that will keep all the apps that we uh, it will keep all the applications 
that we are using, uh, all the middlewares that we are using. Let me try to find where is the first time that it appears. Okay, so it starts as an empty array, and then we push more, more, more things here. So, uh, I don't know what this map does here. I think we can map it to certain route. Ted, you have an idea? Yeah, yeah, map is for routing. See map is for routing, yes, but this is for, this is, you can provide map for use or... So I think you can map, uh, so when you map uh, something to a route, you can use custom middlewares for that routing. But I'm, I'm not sure. Let me go to the beginning. So we've got map that starts as nil. And where do we assign it? OK, yes, here is the example. So see, so we can build. So is it so that the routes will be available to the middleware? No, no, no. This middleware will be run only in this uh, in this route. Oh, you can. You can yes. So, for example, you can do something up. like map uh, admin to use route. Right. Yeah, something like that. So this builder allows you to specify middlewares not only on the top level, but you can you can do top level as well. So this one will be available everywhere, and this one will be available only, this, not available, it will be run only on this route. I don't know if it's possible to nest the mappings, because let's say that I want to do admin here, mm -hmm. and then I want to do something like that. Delete user, and then I want to use another middleware, but I'm not sure if it's possible or if I need to do it here, and then I need to repeat those stuff. So I'm not sure about it. Uh, anyway, we were in this method called use. So this method will add this particular middleware or app that we provided uh, with with all the arguments to the list. So then it will be all will be called in a order that we provided. Now, so this is this is use, uh, and there is map. So map only uh, as only creates this variable uh, and and assigns this block. So executes this block uh, in the route that we provide in the path that we provide here. So this is the second method, and then the third one was run. Okay, so run basically assigns this application, the, the middleware application that we provide there as the main one. And then, uh, and then this is what, is, uh, what creates the application in, in the end. So if we, if we have some map, we, we generate it. Uh, so this generated map will be our main application. And if it's not, we just have the main app. So in my case, I can just do something like this. Because I, I, will, not, uh, I will not be using, or, or I can be using Builder. Uh, I can do it without or, 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 or with the Builder. But if I don't have any, any maps, like in this application, I will just use this, this application. Uh, then what we do, oh, I have no <coughs> idea what this public call does, if someone knows what it does, that public call. I don't know why it reverses it. So this use will be consisting of all the middlewares, right? But then we reverse it, so it starts from the last one, and then we inject. Ah, of course. So, 
So, uh, in a second. Okay, so we need to run, uh, we need to go to the last one, so that we will have something like nest, uh, how to explain it? So that the random sleeper will have the hello app as its app to run. So it will be something like this. Uh, drag. Something like this. So that it will take, uh, we will initialize it with this argument. And I think we need to do it from the end because if I want to provide the hello app as a, the new hello app, the instance of hello app as a application to be called by a random sleeper, I need to I need to create it first, right? So first I create this object and I provide it as argument here. And then because I create this one, I can provide it as argument here to the time measure. So basically what grab does is that it chains everything up so that Yes, exactly, yes. So each next application is an argument to be run by the previous one. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so that's why uh, that's why we reverse it and we inject it then starting from the last one. And then we've got then this is our complete application. And in the end, we have the warm-up. Don't know what it is. No idea. Does it? Okay, okay. The Xlambda or block that is used to warm up. Okay, yeah, that explains a lot. <laughs> okay, so I believe that we want to st uh, before we start serving the request, we need, we need to uh, do something for the application. So for example, imagine that your application loads some data uh, before it serves it to user. So maybe this is what warm-up means. Or, or even caching. Or what? Or even caching. Caching, yes, exactly, yes. So this is like a preparation for the app on the startup time before it starts, uh, before it starts serving the request. And this one? Okay, so this one maybe it checks if the application starts successfully because it creates a mock request uh, and it it just checks if it works. I don't know. This is just my, my guess. I've never used this option before. So anyway, we call this and then we return the application. And this function to app is called in either. So builder.app will basically create a new instance of this builder that will later uh, that will later uh, create create all this nested uh, all this nested structure. And now let's see. Ah, okay. So this is already no. I do. I never called builder.app. In my code, so I don't know where it is. Okay, I do builder dot new. If I do builder dot app, will it work? Is it just an alias? No, no, it's not an alias because I do new and then it, but then it calls to app, but I don't call it manually, right? Yeah. Here, if I replace with new, I do not call to app. So, I have no idea. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so if I provide just new and then I provide block, so this block will be uh, evaluated within this instance. Okay. 
So what I do is, okay, let's see if maybe Ram does it. No. No. Okay, I'm lost here. If someone figures it out, can you later let me know, like write some comment or something? Because I don't know why every, why it's used up here and what 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 is what, why it works with the new if, if it's the same with uh, with us. Okay, I think this is all I prepared for today. You have any more questions or? I'm curious now why my rep application works. Because even in uh, in Aaron's talk, right, he said that the body must respond to uh, respond to each. But in my app, it works even though I just pass a, a string. It worked. You, you passed a string. Yeah. And it worked. Yeah. But for you, it didn't, right? Uh, it didn't for me as well. Yeah. So I wonder if I I just ended up with a server that is more forgiving or okay. Or <laughs> because if I remove all the middleware, I have one middleware. One one middleware. Okay. Let's see if this will work. Uh, no, it doesn't work. You see? Okay, which server did you get? Thin. Thin. Which version? Uh, the newest one, because I've got all the newest versions. <laughs> no, I have no idea. Okay, let me just double. Oh, yes, it's there. 1.64.3. Yes, this is screen for sure. Okay, uh, how do I provide the handler? Let's see if I do it with WebRig. But what is the option now? Uh, Step also says each was a master for training in Ruby 1.8 and removing Ruby 1.9. But I'm not using Ruby 1.9. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't think I'm following, following Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get it. I have seen 1.7 though, so I don't know if it's something that Okay. Uh, let me start with whoever you Yeah, because I know Aaron said it for sure that the body must respond to each. For me, it, it still works. <laughs> no, same here. Okay, let's... <laughs> let's see if that will help. <laughs> Okay, now we have 1.7. Okay, 1.7. This is not that. The computer is, so is broken. Weird. <laughs> I broke <laughs> wreck. <laughs> okay, and, and if I just do. Yeah, it needs to take the environment as a variable, or as an, Where? Argument, as an argument, I guess. Ah. Mm -hmm. No? Ah, what did I do wrong? Uh, oh, you need the curly brackets. What? You need the curly brackets for your... Okay. No idea, man. This is so scary. <laughs> okay, what if I do without the builder? What if I do just this way? No. <laughs> Still the same. Yeah. Are you sure you didn't uh, override the string class to respond to each? <laughs> It's still working. It's still working uh, with Finn. Yeah. 1.7. Yeah. Okay, no idea. Uh -huh. You want to like the screen to try? Just to try and see if I do something different. Okay. Uh, 
That's why it's supposed to work, right? I mean, if it would be 1.7, it's supposed to have the each method. No, but I, I'm, not, I'm, not running, I'm not running Ruby 1.7 for sure. It runs Ruby 2.3, but oh, the, the, the version of the server is 1.7. Yeah. Well, but it's not Ruby 2.1. 2. Yes, 2. Point something, yes. But still works. Uh, per, for some reason. But they run, which, which version of Ruby do you have? 2.3. I've got 2.15. Oh no, it's not. Let's try another one. It's running 2.3.0. Okay. Uh, okay, this one I will run. It shouldn't make a difference. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, I think I... Change? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> False positive. Yes. Okay, let's try once again. Hey, it works. So Ruby version. Ruby 2.3 makes it. Okay, let's try with Ruby. Okay. I'm just glad I, I didn't. <laughs> you didn't go crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's good. This yeah, yeah, works. Yeah. <laughs> Weird. Yeah. What? So now we have another question we can yes. we can dig into. Um, is it about the like the basic object being like a range or something like um, different implementation of each? But string should not implement each even in Ruby. Yeah. yeah. Um, we don't have here uh, uh, each. It doesn't. No. Okay. So <laughs> it yes. <laughs> Some, something behaves. Something behaves weird here. What if thing maybe has some special case in there? Like if you're using Ruby. I don't know. I don't know. No idea. I, I will check later. Do you know which version you used before when it didn't work? Two point one point five. <laughs> yes. But no, it's the, yeah, here's the same. Okay, we can check in the rack code actually, uh, but I don't know where is that. Wait, wait. Where is that each? It's in the body proxy. No, not here, not here, not here. Not here. What if you don't use a builder? Let me show you. This method is a special case to address the bug. For what? See? This uh, method is a special case to address the bug describer. Mm -hmm. Well, we are playing a special case for each Which class is that? Cash there. To save adding too many methods into the class. But when, when was it added? What was the name of the bug? Or the number? 434. Yeah. So the method e yes. Oh, there is a method missing here. Yeah. Or no? But the method missing is on the body proxy class, not on the string class. Okay, let's see. Added 2012. So it's on the body proxy thing. works without a builder, let me try. Oops. And you return just straight string, you didn't use the response class. So you use the yeah. response class. Right. 
Yeah. Yeah. So somehow it turns the string into a body proxy. Yes. Somewhere, but I don't know where. Yeah, but the the thing is that the body proxy dot each calls the body dot each. Oh right, it just delegates. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, I think we will not figure it out now. Yeah. Just leave it as an exercise. <laughs> okay. Anyone has any more questions or want to show some piece of code or ask anything? No? Okay, cool. Uh, thanks for coming then. Thanks to Tinkerbox and Beth for hosting us. I will add the issue on the GitHub to Ruby SG so that we can decide about the next library we are doing. So far we've covered sprockets. Uh, concurrent Ruby and today, today run. Cool. Thanks once again. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.